My name is Gabriel Blythe. And... And if you... And if you've been listening to this since I first started this podcast thing, I, I have been alone. No signs. <laughs> no signs of intelligent life. There are, there are people walking around, sure. Slowly shambling. And now they're starting to form a small mob of, of non-responsive peoples that just grunt and groan as they shuffle around. Something, something caused them to go numb, right? With the exception of me, and you. And since you are hearing this, I imagine you weren't affected by the event. <sighs> this isolation thing has gotten hard. The only time I hear my own voice is when I'm talking to you. I hardly talk to myself at all. It's weird how your jaw almost, almost locks up when you don't use it for days at a time. With the exception, of course, of, you know, to eat and drink. And then there was that thing with the ravens. I'm assuming at this point they are ravens. We can figure that out later. Like, we're co-workers in an office, and we're just crossing each other's paths. Well, today, I was scavenging, let's call it. Uh, it might be the best word. I was, I was looking for equipment. I was looking specifically for farm equipment, some supplies. And I remember hearing some shuffling. Thinking... It was another instance with the others. And I took immediate shelter behind a car. It was midday, and I I remember the, the metal being warm. And that warmth drawing me in as if to say, shh, 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 shh it's all right. And it was a comfort. I hadn't really allowed myself to feel. A comfort I hadn't allowed to remember. I, I wanted so badly to lean into it. Feel that warmth on my skin and take a nap. Forget about everything. It's so amazing how quick we are to want to forget all of your responsibilities for a little bit of comfort. And then I heard voices, and I snapped right to. Now, at this point, I think I'm, I'm, I'm projecting my thoughts onto others. Onto the others, rather. Because auditory hallucinations are just the thing I need at this point, you know? I've been alone, what? 20 weeks? More? Less? Nights save me. <laughs> Only they would know. So I sat there, fighting against that exhaustion and, and the will to lean into the warmth and take that nap. So I listened. And I watched carefully. I remember I strained my neck to peek through the window. And you know what I saw? Guess. No. <laughs> no. No, but that one's weirdly specific. We'll, we'll talk about that one later. People. People. Two of them. Two of them! Plural of persons! More than one! Woo! Yeah! 
I knew it. I... I knew it. I knew it. I do. It was only a matter of time. Ah! <laughs> Woo! Ah! I kept thinking, you you ain't alone, Gabe. And I would also think, mm, but what if you are? Then it'd be followed up with, well, hope isn't gonna hurt you, right? And I held out hope. And I and I just I saw two freaking people. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, okay. What what do I tell you first? So uh, there are there are two people. <laughs> um their names Eileen and Brett and when I saw them I think I did the same thing that you just heard. But <laughs> they weren't as uh, chill and or excited as you are. Uh, I know I I'm, I'm still excited about it. <laughs> Anyways, I I started laughing and and just calling out super excited. They however we're not as thrilled, and a lot more cautious. Eileen pulled out a friggin' bow and arrow. As if they've been hunting in the woods, or are in some comic book. And they aimed it straight at me. And were like, what are you up to? What traps have you laid? <sighs> what are you up to? And what traps have you laid? <sighs> Cool. I, I I I had to force myself to calm down. I didn't I didn't care if they shot me in the, if they killed me in the moment. The satisfaction that I was right. Come on. Admit it. You would totally forget how to act like yourself. Well, I just sat on the ground. I was so overwhelmed, I just sat down, and I put my hands up, and I kept saying, There are other people! I'm getting lightheaded. Oh, man. I would just say that over and over again. There are other people! There are other people! Over and over again. Still not great with words. You know, I haven't had much time to practice. You would think, after so much time with the one-on-one -on -one with you, I would be better at this. But alas, no wordsmiths am I. So, after I calmed down and explained I was a survivor like them, and I didn't have any traps or anything like that, they searched me and my bag. They tossed everything, and they were thorough. A little, a little too personal. And since that's the first contact that I've had with another human being in quite some time, I may have fell in love with Brett. Like, on the spot. Like, hand on my arm, goosebumps immediately, heart palpitations, the whole nine. <laughs> so stupid. <sighs> so, eventually, they told me who they were. Brett, uh, he's about my age. Super friggin' lane. Like, as if he works out at least once a week. Keeps his hair short, and he smelled like grease and sweat. So that smell was pretty strong when he got up in my personal space, you know? He said he worked for a shipping company, and he just moved boxes all day, every day. And apparently, you get pretty ripped from that. I mean... <laughs> Eileen, on the other hand, whew, she makes... <laughs> She, she makes action stars in the movies look like they don't get enough protein. You know what I'm saying? Swole is what I think the kids are saying. <laughs> Anyways, she, she, she's the one with the bow and arrow. And she had a, a, a tight braided ponytail with like, like this awesome streak of gray in there. She stood super tall, 
It was just constantly scanning the horizon. She actually told me that she used to be Royal Navy. Apparently, she saw some combat uh, a couple of times uh, from dissenting pirates in the Atlantic, which is kind of cool and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> so, both people who are a lot more physical than I, kind of promising, I guess. My theory about the weak inheriting the Earth is kind of a wash, but that's good. I, I, I like to think that means there are all sorts of people who survived. So I asked, like, why they survived, you know, like, the big why, and they hadn't even thought about it. Just assumed they weren't bitten or didn't ingest something that was in the water or meat or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I am a little upset that they aren't as interested in the pursuit of knowledge and answers. So I asked why they were here. I, I honestly, I really had hoped to hear them say something to the effect of, uh, we heard you on the radio. Gabe, you were the reason we started moving towards you all the way from Idaho. We got, we, we, we got here on foot and pushed through the worst of, of everything because you inspired us. I like to think that. <sighs> but they said it was a logical thought process uh, once they determined that there was no one responsive person in Idaho that they found. So... They walked all the way from Rexburg, another college town, uh, and for about two weeks, they walked south. Salt Lake seemed like the most reasonable place, which does make sense. Uh, pass through Pocatello, and if you don't see any other survivors, why stay there, right? So we talked into the night, and I took them to a place I knew was safe. Shared some of the rations that I have. No, I didn't take them here. Or to the place that I'm calling home right now. Listen, <laughs> if literature has taught me anything, because of the fact that I'm starved for human contact, means that I need to be extra cautious. Don't let my guard down kind of thing. <sighs> so I, to kind of fill you in, to be honest with you, I have gone around the valley and set up a few places that I knew I could barricade myself from the others, just in case their shambling around got intense again. Had to move some stuff around to open a blocked door. <laughs> I uh, when, when I showed them the place, I had to make it seem like it was just a place that I knew had low foot traffic, so I pretended like the door was blocked and make it seem like it was kind of like my usual go-to. We started settling in. We had some chips and biscuits. They were pretty pleased. <laughs> Kept laughing at each other. Talking about how they haven't had something near as good in a while. Mostly jerky. Can you imagine? Told him there's enough to share for the next couple of days. Three to four, maybe. A lie, I know, but again, I, just because I, I want to invite you in doesn't necessarily mean that I still am going to drop my guard. We talked some more about uh, what we did when it happened, what our plans were. And oh man, it was just so great to have a conversation. A human, person to person, human to human, just English to English, or, you know, any form of conversation back back and forth. It was, I think I, think I may have just talked their ear off, to be honest. My throat, <laughs> my throat kind of hurt uh, after talking so much. You can't imagine how excited I am about this. I, I, I am not alone. 
you, you aren't alone. We aren't alone. They, they don't know. I'm at, I'm at the broadcasting place. But they know I, I wait at the college for other survivors. So, they, they said, uh, they said something to the effect that I'm doing the king's work. <laughs> Which, gotta be honest, uh, started making me tear up just a little bit. <sighs> so, if you want to come find me, knowing it's not just me, now's a great time to come out of hiding. The State Street College Building. You are not alone! And you don't have to be, baby! Yeah! Mm. Good luck out there! Woo!